Hello and welcome to Roll Again. My name's Steve and this is the channel where you get to follow along as I delve into all things Dungeons and Dragons. Today's episode, I'm going to try my hand in minis. I was at a local box store this past week and was passing the toy clearance rack. I happened to look down and saw a package of metal DC superhero minis for three dollars. Uh, I've seen some of the prices on miniatures on uh, online sites, Amazon, things like that, and I know they can be pretty expensive, so I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, I've never tried to paint minis before, and I said, here's a chance. I'll pick up these $3 metal minis, uh, bring them home, and see if with some uh, quick paint jobs I can turn them into something that we could utilize for Dungeons & Dragons. So um, stay tuned and watch as I uh, continue to um, try my hand at mini painting. Um, once the video is done, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let me know what you think in the comments. So the first thing we kind of had to do here was assess the situation. Uh, I told you that I found this five-pack of metal die-cast superheroes uh, at a big box store. Um, it was just a few dollars for them, so I figured, hey, why, what the heck, uh, why not practice my painting skills and see if I can make something out of them? Um, this is Superman, who's the first one I kind of grabbed out of the box, and I decided to start off here. Um, the first issue I kind of noticed was, if you look at dice it, with a 20-sided die next to him, um, he's not necessarily in 28 millimeter scale. Uh, in that scale, he's a little bit bigger than your standard 28 millimeter uh, fantasy miniatures. He's probably standing between 7 and 8 feet in that piece, so that kind of limited my options a little bit with all the miniatures. Made me kind of think of what was I going to do with them, and how was I going to connect them to other minis that I might have in the future. Um, so I kind of have been thinking about it, and I kind of have an idea of what to do with him. But the first thing we got to do is prime him. Um, as you can see... He comes with a really glossy uh, paint job. It's, I'll bring him in close for you here. Um, it's not actually, I mean, it's not a, a pro paint job. I, I'm just a beginner myself, so my painting's going to be kind of terrible here, just to prep you ahead of time. But again, I mean, this was kind of thrown on, and it's, it's done in a way to kind of mass market um, to everybody. But there's some potential here, I think, especially, like I said, for only three dollars for five metal minis uh, you can't really beat that deal um, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is start off with uh, priming it um, I'm gonna use just a regular flat matte black uh, paint that seems to be the best that I found um, the black it tends to help kinda show the details and to be honest in some of the uh, channels that I've watched that deal with minis a lot. Many of the um, craftsmen I know, you know, say that the black is a primer tends to be the best to put color over the top. And I found that that sort of does work with a lot of the craft stuff I've done. So I'm going to start off just by completely priming him up, and uh, we'll see how he looks in a minute. Okay, so we're back, and here is primed Superman. As you can see, as I mentioned before, I just used some cheap black matte paint. Um, it's just craft paint. It comes in a big jar. I found it in my wife's craft stuff because, to be honest, I'm too cheap to go buy fancy stuff. These are the first miniatures I've ever painted, and they may end up being terrible. Um, but I just want to give it a try, so I decided to go with that. I know a lot of guys on YouTube tend to use... Um, spray primers gray or spray black primer and I just didn't have it laying around and I didn't want to use that as another excuse to never start this I've been wanting to get into mini painting for quite some time and uh, if I said well I'll just wait till I get primer you know if I I'll just wait till I have spray primer I'll forget to get it next time I'm out at a store and I'll just never start this it'll be one more thing that I never get to do that I said I wanted to so, as you can see, um, I'm just using a base cheap handle. Again, um, I'm not going to go crazy overboard um, paying for lots of gear right now. I know they sell 
you know, special, special handles that, you know, will hold your mini. But really, I just used an empty prescription bottle, which I stripped down. I painted the top black just so it kind of looked nice when I had my min minis there. And I stuck it, stuck the mini right to the top. I know a lot of guys use, um, like, the poster putty to do that with. And I'm going to be honest with you, I just used this dental orthodontics wax. Um, I had it in my medicine cabinet. As I was looking around for stuff to, to, to use, uh, I don't know why neither myself or my wife have ever worn braces, but we had this wax that a lot of times you use to protect your lips from having braces. Um, and so I just tore a piece off and just stuck it to the bottom of the mini, and, uh, and it seems to be holding pretty well um, to my little handle I've got here. So I like this because you can spin it pretty easily. Um, as you can see, my camera work is shoddy, but as you can see... Um, it's still drying a little bit, but it did a pretty good job of the, the matte black paint. did a pretty good job of kind of priming everything. Um, there's still a few shiny spots, but that's really where it, just where it's wet. Everything else is nice and primed. You can still see the details. It did start to cover the S a bit, which I'm trying to, so I put a, a little bit extra. Two coats went onto everything, but I put a little extra coat over the emblem on Superman's chest just because I'm trying to, you know, Get, get away from some of the more identifiable aspects of Superman. Um, I think I have an idea of kind of how I'm going to paint him to try to utilize him in a Dungeons and Dragons type environment. Um, Superman, unfortunately, has that like iconic superhero outline to him. Um, the cape and everything like that. Luckily, the cape can become a cloak pretty easily, um, especially in, in fantasy role-playing games. So... Uh, where I'm thinking here is I, I DM a weekly game that's online. It's my first online campaign I've ever done. But given all of the craziness in the world right now, um, I started one about eight weeks ago. And it's been a great opportunity, actually. I've got people, I've got players from all over the country, people I never get a chance to play with normally. And so um, in that campaign, there is an NPC in the base town that my players are in um, named Koi Horsebane, who is a very flashy sorcerer. He's the head of the Mage Guild, um, and he also runs a tavern slash D&D equivalent to a nightclub, um, where it pretty much is like the hot night spot in town. Um, and he is just a flashy, uh, attention-needy, um, individual, he kind of, where Superman is that all-American kind of superhero, Koi Horsebane is like the all-time um, flashy super wizard, at least in his own mind, he thinks. And so uh, the size issue here, being that these these are going to look about seven to eight feet compared to other minis, I think Koi Horsebane would be just the kind of guy that would cast enlarge on himself while walking around his nightclub, just so he could be more the center of attention than his flashy clothes already does. So I'm going to try to give him some paint that would make him look maybe like my NPC in my mind looks, and maybe I can use it in my campaign someday. So I'm going to start throwing on a couple colors, and we'll check back in with you um, when I get some color on him. All right. All right, here's, so here's the, the next steps that I've done. Um, I decided to kind of give him a bright orange inside of his cape, but I'm going to keep the outside black. I think if we're going for a cloak look, I want to keep the outside black just to kind of downgrade some of the superhero-ishness of him to begin with. But Koi Horsebane would be very flamboyant, and a bright orange inside of his cape to kind of highlight his own silhouette would be just the kind of tool thing he would do. So... Uh, that's kind of where I went here. It's probably going to, I'm going to have to hit it with at least another coat. Um, I decided to go with like a deer skin tan for his upper body, for his shirt, um, just to kind of tone it down a little bit, you know, give it more of a fantasy medieval type feel to it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet with that emblem. Um, it's covering pretty well with the black paint. I think I might leave it so that it, leave it black so that it looks like, you know, part of the cape. Um, or part of the cloak kind of coming up over the top of him. Um, I haven't really kind of decided yet, but I want to just downplay it as much as possible, and I think that might help. 
Um, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to hit it again. Hit, I'm going to touch up the cape a little bit more and kind of decide on a color for the pants um, and do his boots as well. Um, and then we'll see what his face and his hair kind of look like as we can continue here. Um, as I mentioned, I mean, I'm not using anything real fancy. Uh, you can see here, I just got some basic craft paints, which is all I'm, I'm using to really touch, touch base here. Um, I didn't go out and get anything crazy, um, but we'll, I'll show you some more as we kind of go along and we advance here. Um, again, first mini painting, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know if this is terrible or if it's actually come along well. We'll kind of see as we finish up. Okay, so here it is. Um, you can see I finished off the pants with that same kind of deer skin brown that I kind of liked before uh, for the top. And then what I ended up ha doing actually was kind of painting a gray, almost like an undershirt with some black trimming down the center to kind of really try to hide that shield, that Superman shield as much as possible. Um, I painted out the face and the hands and a kind of a homemade flesh tone that I came up with um, and utilized like a gunmetal gray for boots and kind of some makeshift bracers just again to kind of break up the form and make it look a little bit more um, fantasy as I can. Um, so uh, it's come, it came coming along pretty well. The back I left black and um, I'm going to now hit it. I saw you can see I did the hair as well in a brown color. Um, it's really not coming along too bad. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and I think it's definitely can be used, utilized as a wizard or a sorcerer. Um, so I'm going to hit it with a black wash and kind of see if it makes some of the detail pop a little bit. And I'll be back. So here he is, the finished product. He's still on the base, but um, I think he came out well. We hit him with a little bit of black wash. Um, and then I did have to, I did come in afterwards and just touch up some of the lighter spots. The black wash I mixed, I think was a little dark, um, but it came out pretty good. He's, he's got a little bit of that rustic shadowy, uh, texture to it that the black wash gives. Um, and, uh, I mean, you know, for coming in a pack of metal figures, that was just, uh, you know, $3 in a clearance rack, um, it's it's doable you know the back you could see here um the i painted the neck and the hair but i left the back uh cape black um just to kind of get away from that superhero we feel um and try to get it as much into the fantasy realm as possible um i think we've come away from that superman feeling a little bit and i think it's playable as a wizard or a sorcerer if need be um the other ones here we go um, this pack also came with Aquaman, who I think the, the go-to with Aquaman there had to be, uh, a Triton. Um, I think that was a pretty, pretty basic go-to that you have to, you had to do. Um, I'm still working on painting the bases here, but, um, I just kind of painted his skin blue, gave him some green hair, um, and just try to lighten him up a little bit, give him some silver armor. Um, Lex Luthor, I think, came out pretty well. Um, Lex Luthor came with a pack, and he was in his power armor. Um, but uh, as I started to look at it, I said, you know, the power that power armor that he wears is that bright blue and or purple and green. And uh, with the bald head, I just thought he would make a great kind of orc captain in full plate armor. And so that's kind of where I tried to do it out. The black wash really worked wonders on this guy. Um, his back is, is kind of well detailed as well with the black wash. Um, and then Supergirl. Um, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go with her. And then I just started thinking about... I was actually kind of inspired by the upcoming D&D &D adventure, the Icewind Dale rhyme of the Frost Maiden. And I know in some of the older D&D &D, uh, Icewind Dale adventures, whenever the Frost Maiden came into play, um, she often kind of took the form 
of a of a young girl or a sorceress with blue skin and um the you know it was cold and and it froze everything around her and so that's kind of where i went with this uh, i used just a, a number of different shades of blue um white hair and then the cape as well is kind of blue now i did something different with her because i wanted that blue icy feeling and again trust me i'm no i'm no pro at all i mean these are the first four figures i've ever painted um but what i did was uh i hit her with a white wash where i just used white paint instead of the black paint in the same wash mixture and kind of hit her cape with that and you could see kind of highlighted the cape in white a little bit as well as some of her other pieces just to give her that kind of wintry frost kind of look um, it's not professional grade by any means i am an, I'm an amateur but i mean you know if you're looking at it especially from a playing distance these are definitely usable D, &D figures um and they're all metal you know um superman or my wizard included sorcerer they're all metal four metal D, D figures playable right now uh for three dollars in a clearance bin and just a little bit of paint um you know i don't think i spent more than i don't know an hour and a half maybe two hours at the most on each one of these um, you could probably tell because I'm not that detail oriented yet, but hopefully as my channel progresses, you'll see my painting skills improve as well. Um, the one thing that I really, that kind of struck me though, as I move, move Superman around, was Batman. Uh, Batman still has not been painted. Um, and mainly it's just because, uh, to be honest, I really don't know what to do with Batman. Um, in this pack, he came with this really cool kind of silver, black, and red paint job. Uh, for those DC fans, it almost reminds me of kind of a Thomas Wayne Batman from Flashpoint. I'm not sure if that's where they were going with it. Um, but Batman just has that iconic um, silhouette with the little horns on top and the cowl. And I'm just kind of unsure where to go with it with him um, to make him D&D &D playable. So uh, in the comments, if you're watching this and you've got a great idea, throw it in the comments. Tell me uh, what you think he'd, he'd look good as uh, transformed into a D&D &D playable mini. And uh, if I see a great idea that I really uh, think I can do, I might uh, take your idea and I'll credit you in one of the upcoming videos and I'll paint him up as a, as a future video and see how it looks. So I'm open to suggestions completely, but he's... He's uh, it's a really cool little mini, but like as you can see, he definitely has that Batman silhouette. Um, the ho the little tiny horns on top are kind of more my concern than anything. But even the cowl and stuff, it's just a little bit tougher for a D and D piece. But uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of experience out there and a lot of people with great ideas. So if you think of something, uh, give me a shout uh, in the comments section here and tell me, and I'll uh, definitely credit whoever has the best idea and try to add him but for now at least i came away with four great minis that are playable i mean they've got workable paint jobs on them like i said these were my first four paint minis minis ever um i just used some basic principles i i picked up um from some different channels you know i'm a big fan if you if you like to follow the youtube channels i'm a big fan of black craft uh black magic crafts uh he does a great job um not only with minis, but just with, you know, building at home um, buildings and landscapes. Again, stuff that everybody can do, which is kind of a lot of the point of my channel. You know, I'm an amateur, and so I want to find stuff I can do that anybody else can do as well. Um, and so that's kind of where I went with this. But um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, uh, give it a like. Uh, comment, please, with your thoughts on this. And um, next week... I'm actually expecting a delivery of uh, a batch of townsfolk miniatures that I found pretty cheap on the internet. Um, I want to see what kind of quality they are. They're plastic minis, um, and I'm going to unbox them for you in next week's video, and then I'll choose a few that uh, we can paint up and see if we can add to the collection. Uh, Batman's still waiting there for your ideas, so if you come across them, uh, give me a, a shout. And uh, until next time, uh, keep playing.